You're saying that you like the take that I had on people with depression yeah. and helping them get out with exercise. Yeah. But dealing with people with addiction, how would you treat it? I think, I think the biggest issue is people with addiction are being placed with a label to create, help give them the perception of their identity. So an addict will always be an addict. I don't think that's true. I think an addict that doesn't evolve will always find something to be addicted to. Now, is doing methamphetamine, you know, is doing CrossFit better than doing methamphetamine? For sure. Like I said this before, I've, I saw a big pattern when I owned my CrossFit gym and just working with athletes throughout the world. A lot of CrossFit athletes that wanted to get to regionals or get to the games at that time were recovering alcoholics and drug addicts. And they went from being drug addicts or alcoholics into CrossFit, and then they started to become born-again Christians um, or some form. They went heavily into religion as a, as a form to, again, constantly have this sort of healing mantra where I think that if you were to just understand why the root cause of the addiction or the escapism comes from, and we can express the anger towards it, not cognitively, but physically, then we can really start to change the behavioral cycles. Because in the end, it's, it's you know, Charlotte, you said it best, like, it's not using, right? I use the vacuum cleaner, I use this, I use that. It's, it's labels that were placed on ourselves through society by labeling identities that aren't necessarily you. Do you enjoy certain feelings? Yeah, sure. Do you enjoy certain intensity moments? For sure. But what have I talked about? The only way to change behavioral cycles is that we need more intensity than the past event. So as much as it is for drug addiction, it's the same thing for PTSD. I, I had PTSD, right? I didn't do anything crazy. I just had a rock climbing accident. And that caused a certain amount of stress in my life that nothing else stressed me out. And you can, you know, we've had these, these conversations with Dave, like, okay, so what stresses you out? Well, a boulder coming down on me, right? So other than that, I mean, there's other stresses, but they're very minute in comparison. And so I think with addicts is there's a very high sense of intensity that needs to be replaced. I think CrossFit did an amazing job of finding that replacement. I think it could be fine-tuned. The whole concept of CrossFit or functional fitness, high-intensity training, creating high neural output to the muscles to help dictate and change how people perceive the world. So I think addiction is more of a part of it is escaping a root cause of how somebody felt at a certain moment and they don't want to feel it or face it or express the anger towards those events. So therefore they choose a substance and that could be, you know, as much as it can be marijuana or cocaine or methamphetamines or opioids, it could be food, it could be quick, you know, sugary foods, it could be Coca-Cola, you're not necessarily, just because you have a new justification doesn't necessarily mean that you've evolved as a person. I think one of your identities still holds on to this sort of escapist mantra and enjoys not having to deal, it, deal with it. So the best way to use movement and what we do, like what I do with movement ayahuasca is I go to the root cause of what your body needs to express first not on what you cognitively think brought you towards addiction or brought you to have these events in your life. So I attack it from the body tells me what it needs to change first. I allow the, that part of the body to express itself, have high amounts of intensity and start to change how it moves in this world, which changes the way that your brain will start to perceive the world and create reactions in the world. Right? So whenever something becomes overwhelming, you have a certain specific thing that you go to to help sabotage and help you kind of escape or quit. And so we can create the right neural output of muscles, high enough intensity that is the same feeling that you felt when X, Y, and Z happened. But rather than losing and going to that collapsed state, we teach you to win and to fight for it. Then we start to change the behavioral patterns. We start to regulate the nervous system in certain triggered events or tr triggered environments, shall we say. So it's possible. It's not easy. <laughs> and I think, you know, and, and again, I'm not saying that this is the only way. I'm saying there's several ways to approach it through cognitive therapy and, you know, medications or this and this and this. I think that movement 
proper movement done at high intensity is the most straightforward way to get to somebody's true character. And I think you can see that when you've done a crazy hard workout that either frustrates you, infuriates you, creates rage, creates happiness, creates brotherly love, creates community, creates joy, creates sadness. We've all gone through it. When you do hard workouts, you have a certain emotional expression. Whether you're expressing it, you know, how we think it should be expressed or not, you have a certain expression that happens every time. So if we learn to do training based on guidelines of how you want to be in this world or how you want to behave or perceive this world rather than for the mere fact of completing a certain objective, I think that we can change a whole lot more about your behavioral standards and more importantly, your sabotaging of your behaviors, right? So whether that's addiction or you know, falling into manic depressive moods or X, Y, and Z. That was a long rant. Does that make sense though? Uh, I, I'm gonna have to rewatch it. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. But you, you kept mentioning root cause, root cause, root cause. Yeah. And finding root cause, especially what you do at Movement Ayahuasca. Yeah. But usually this is, I don't know, like, a shit ton of ter therapy hours to get there. Yeah. So what makes you think that movement can quote unquote, maybe even replace and, and even quicken this quicken this process? Because as I think, as I understand, movement ayahuasca is four days. Yeah. But it's the start of the process. So it, 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 it allows you to find where the body needs to start changing these perceptions. And how do I know it works? Because I have experience. <laughs> I mean, you know, like I've had, I've had crazy experience of dealing with people that have had, you know, as from extreme examples, not all my clients are these, this extreme, but I've had clients that have had eating disorders for 20 plus years. And in six weeks, with the only change being movement that has been added to their daily routine, they were able to subdue the urge of wanting to go to that behavioral pattern of control for the for the eating disorder within three months where massive stress came into into the picture for this client she wrote to me she's like i am so impressed that i didn't even have not even that the urge pop up in my head like it was only after the entire super stressful situation happened that i went holy cow normally i would be you know doing the, this behavior, like by, by far, I would have been super deep in that kind of collapsed sympathetic freeze, like control, uh, purge eating, blah, 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 blah. But now it didn't even cross my mind to do so. I handled the situation. I took action. I went to go work out. I expressed the anger that I had. And then only after I finished, I was like, holy cow, if this was me, you know, four months ago, it would have been a completely different situation. I would have been doing, you know, these types of behaviors within the food control system, right? Their, their disorder. So I think that it's, it's, it's hard for people to understand because a lot of people have been training all their lives and they've forgotten to be so intuitive about how they train. So they choose to go for information, not knowledge. So what you used to train and you train for feel, and that's how you would start to learn how to move better within the, within an exercise. Now you're, you're using an external factor of your coach or your personal trainer or the program that you bought online or your chat GPT workout that got written up for you to give you the results. It's a passive way of training. Does that make sense? So the root cause isn't, is not dictated by what you cognitively think you need to work on. The root cause is dictated by where within your inner child, right? Where within your, from birth or potentially, you know, <laughs> past, uh, like what is a generational trauma? Like what is the one thing that needs to change? What do you need to change the prediction on? Because the body works in observing, creating a prediction and living out that, that prediction. So by changing how the body observes the world, you change how you predict your experiences are going to go. That's how you do it. So movement ayahuasca is of course a starting point because nothing in life is linear. All we're doing is we're giving you, this is what you need to work on first. 
and not everybody has it because I've had people that show up and I can tell that they're there to have me heal them. And that's not the point. I'm here to give you the tools to heal yourself and to make the changes if you want to. And then after that, it's like, okay, so we did all of this intense work in four days, which is a whole lot of just regulating the nervous system part of the phylogenetic hierarchy, right? I'm just going through these states and I'm forcing you to go through these states through physical hardship. And then afterwards, it's okay, so now we're going to start to find the rhythms, you know, of do you sabotage yourself or do you go into these depressions or into these panic attacks every three days, every six weeks, every three months, whatever it may be, we find these cycles and then I allow you to create an auto-regulation system where now you have, since you have interoception, now you have proprioception of when these cycles are happening. Now you understand when you start to go downhill. So that's the beauty of it, is if you can tell, then you can choose to make a change out of it or you can choose to stay on autopilot, which, listen, we're humans. I still get on some autopilot modes where I'm like, dude, what the hell? Like, that's why I don't play Fortnite. Because I start playing Fortnite, and before you know it, I'm waking up in the morning to go play Fortnite before I go with the kids. I'm like, I don't need that in my life. It's so like, you know, or buying ice cream. Like, you saw me buy ice cream. Like, I finished, I had a couple, and then I finished the whole pint, but I haven't touched the other one. Because I'm like, that's like, I'll go straight into it. And then I'll start buying, every time I go to the store, I'll buy a pint of ice cream and start eating it on autopilot. So I, now I can catch myself, and I can enjoy the pint when I want to, and then I'm done. Right. So like it's, it's, it's all, it's all about auto regulation, but the body, I hate saying the body keeps the score because of the book, but the body allows you to have the most amount of change in how you perceive things because you are changing, not the information, but the experiences that you want to have. Right. You can explain a story. You can, you can tell the story, but you can never share the experience. The experience is being lived right now. If we can change how you want to feel experiences, the story changes automatically. I just came up with that one. That sounds kind of cool, right? But, if, but does that make sense? I mean, you could give three people the same story and what could be a horror movie, what could be an adventure, and what could be a romantic comedy. Yeah. It's perception. So I'm giving you perspective of all three and choosing which one do you want to do. Where, where does the body want to go? Does it want to stay stuck in its current behavioral cycle or does it want to have a change? Usually when people come to see me it's because they want change and they haven't been able to find it. So that's what I do is I slowly give them change. I give them small actionable steps to start making big changes. Cognitive therapy allows you to create an understanding of what has happened in the past but there's no stressful situation that allows you to change how you'll behave in the future. It's still all cognitive, but we understand the body is reactive beyond the cognitive brain. That's why sometimes you're going into shit and you're like, I don't want to be doing this. Why the fuck am I spiraling into this thing? But the body keeps going and going and going. The physical symptoms of anxiety still show up with the heart rate elevating, the shortness of breath, the gut feeling where you're like, oh my God, like I feel like I'm gonna puke, I'm not hungry. And no matter how much you want to change that cognitively, you still have that feeling. So that's how much power the body has compared to the cognitive brain. Cognitive brain has a huge part in it as well. Don't get me wrong. Again, they're all feedback loops. For me, I use the movement and the stress of the body and more importantly, the neural output of the muscles as the medium to change how we observe the world and how we want to perceive the world and react in it. Yeah, it's not too. Where do we go from here? <laughs> Cooking. Cooking. We need to go make the stew. That was good.